Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, the the fourth. I have to get out. Oh, so one of these days, I'm going to start to look before I actually start it and check the date. But it is the fourth of August, and this is Photo Justice Photo Moment. We missed yesterday because uh, no excuse, my fault. I was just working on a project, and I looked up and go, "Oh my God, it's ten o'clock." I completely missed it, and I decided, "Well, I'm not going to do one now because nobody's looking for it." So we'll just wait a day. So here we are, the next day. So welcome. Thank you for uh, for coming today. If you're watching live, I certainly appreciate that. And do me a favor. So I've been talking to people um, or hearing from people who some people get notified when I go live and some don't. And I can't seem to figure out what the pattern is. I don't know if it's people who have liked the page and liked one of the live videos and then they get notified or if it's um, just everybody who's liked the page, but that certainly doesn't seem to be the case. I can't figure out the pattern. So if you get notified that there are live, that I'm live or about to be live or whatever it is, do me a favor and let me know. Um, shoot me a message, put a comment, whatever. Just let me know. And if you're getting that, let me know if you have liked the photo Joseph page, which you must have. Um, and also specifically if you've liked the videos or liked a bunch of the videos or just one of the videos or if you've liked none of the videos. Um, you know, click the like is what I mean, of course, just because I'm really curious to try and figure this out. It seems to be completely random. Anyway, so that out of the way, today's photo moment is about something that I've talked a little bit about before, and I know there was quite a bit of interest around it, so I thought I'd show it off a bit more specifically, a bit more closely, and that is this painter pole adapter. So I showed this off in a real estate video that I did. And this thing here, this little piece right here is what we're talking about. But let's first talk about what this is. This is just a painter's pole. This is what you'd find in any hardware store uh, called an extension pole. I guess technically it's not called a painter's pole. It's called an extension pole, typically used for painting. And on the end of this pole is a monstrous bit of threads. So let's here pop into the close-up camera here, get that thing down so you can see it. So these monstrous threads on here that are standard on these extension poles. And these are designed, if you ever pick up a, a paint roller, for example, you'll see that the handle of the roller has these threads in it so that you can thread it onto one of these and then you know paint your ceilings, paint your walls, your tall walls, whatever it may be. This thing extends. So let's see if I can do this without breaking everything in my studio. Uh, so this, un, uh, this loosens, this extends out, then you lock that down and you get it in at the height that you want. There we go. You get it in at the height that you want. This particular pole, is six to 12 feet. So closed six feet, open 12 feet, obviously anywhere in between. And they get, you can buy them considerably longer. You can also buy shorter ones. So like this one um, fits in my car, but I have to lay down the back seat and extend it all the way through. A four foot one would fit in the car quite easily. Um, eight foot ones, you might need to have a truck to move it around. I don't know, it obviously depends on your car, but these poles do come in various lengths. So the whole thing here is that with this fancy adapter, you can attach just about anything to the top of this. So let me get rid of the pole. We don't need that anymore. And let's talk about the adapter. First off, let me show you where to get this thing. So I bought mine from Adorama, and I think that's kind of the only place I've seen it. I remember when I was Googling this, I couldn't find it on Amazon, if I remember. Um, this is where it showed up. So the technical name of it is a Casey, Enterpri Casey Enterprises, come here, you, uh, Casey Pole Adapter. If you search painter's pole, or painter's pull adapter, you're not gonna find it. You gotta just either pull adapter or KC pull adapter, but that's the key, the word KC and then pull adapter will find it. So 25 bucks, you can see this thing is quite the bargain. It is a, a really, really useful tool for $25. Now, obviously you gotta buy the painter's pull on top of that, but you know those are relatively cheap. Okay, so what does it do? So it adds this adapter, this standard studio post onto the end of it. And that's the real key in here. Um, so I want to see here, I'm going to get to the live thing pulled up here just to make sure I'm following that. Um, so it's got this adapter on the end, or it, it adapts to this standard studio plug so that you can plug, connect just about anything to it. Um, there we go, oh good. Uh, so you can attach just about anything to it. And that's what I really wanted to show you guys today was how we go about attaching things to this. So, uh, and the kind of things we can. So in the, uh, in the video for the, um, uh, real estate thing, I had a camera attached to it. And that was attached via a ball head. Now the ball head is not going to just attach here. So the part that you do you would use for that, I took <laughs> I took it off and set it outside and didn't put it in my little toy box. Because I'm clever that way. Alright, uh give me half a minute. This is not it. 
and it is not here. Okay, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna go to something else and come back to that. Um, Ty, I know you're out in the other room. If you could find the adapter for that, is sitting on the big wooden table and bring that into me, that would be most appreciated. So let's go for a strobe first, and then we'll get the camera on there. This is a very common, very standard adapter for putting a strobe or pretty much anything on one end and then a light stand on the other. So this would attach onto here. Lock this into place. Uh, so I'm doing this backwards. Into here. Loosen that, drop that in. Lock that into place. Doors opening. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Aha. Got it. Okay. So that locks into place there. This obviously is now on the pole. On here, you can attach a light or any number of things. And this particular piece here, I don't remember what these guys are called, but this guy here has a hole in it. You can kind of see here. Let's go to the close-up camera. You can see, here we go. There's a hole in there. And that is so that you can put a umbrella through it. So let me do that really quick. Just set up an umbrella here. Okay, so got the umbrella. This will go into here. Loosen that up so it actually goes in. Cool. So now this, obviously you need to attach a light to here to shine through the umbrella, bouncing or shooting through. So for that, let me set this down because I swear I'm gonna break something with all this junk. Um, variety of ways to attach a strobe. The easiest thing is most strobes are gonna come with one of these little stands here. Now this, this is my Lumix strobe, but the Canon ones are exactly the same. And pretty much every strobe I've seen, you get one of these with it. And the idea behind this is that you can just attach your strobe to it, lock it in, because otherwise they're quite loose, and then just set it down on your table, wherever you gotta set it, and then point the light and, and off you go. So that's nice and easy. But these things also have, on the bottom of them, a quarter 20 thread. Let's get that so you can see it. There we go, a little quarter 20 thread. So you can attach this to a tripod or just about anything that's got a quarter 20 on it. So going in my bag of tricks here, I've got posts like, or I'll use a short one here, like this guy here. Again, it's a standard studio part. I'm trying to get this so you can see it. There we go. Quarter 20 on one, one side, 3816 on the other. Um, got a post for locking in, just a variety of different ways this thing can be used. But the point is here, I can now thread this into the bottom of here. So that's on there. And then grab my rig back here. And let's see if I can do this here. Keep this all on camera. Drop that into place. Tighten this in. Tighten, tighten, tighten. There we go. Close enough. And now I have the ability, let's go back to the wide shot here. Um, I have the ability to position this head wherever I want, shooting through the umbrella, all while it's attached to this painter's pole. So now I can get a light way up in the air. I can get this up so that it's pointing straight down over the subject. I can get it up so it just looks like a really high light. Any number of things, any number of reasons you might want to get a light way up where you can't normally get to, this is superb for that. Now this is just one way of putting these things together. If you don't need to have the umbrella, you don't need to have this angling device, then you could skip a step and use, let's see, use something like this guy that I'm about to use to attach a light directly to that. So lots of different ways you can go about doing it. Sometimes you need to go through a variety of adapters and that's why I have this kind of silly little bag of adapters here. So let's go close up on this again. See all these little, little adapters, little posts, little threads, just a bag of tricks, basically. This will allow me, ideally, to connect pretty much anything to, okay, wrong camera, keep attachment, allow me to attach pretty much anything to anything. That's the whole idea behind this little bag of tricks here. Anyway, so now let's go back to this guy. This is the one that Ty brought in for me. So this, um, let's get this back again. Get this piece out of here, get rid of the umbrella because that's really making things complicated here. All right, umbrella's out. Let's take this whole mechanism off. Let's mute that. And here we go. Okay, so back to our basic KC pole adapter. This guy here is really simple. It's just a, let's go to the close-up again, just a little adapter that will fit any light stand tops, which is, of course, what this is, and then screws in tight. And this one gives me a 3816 bolt on the top of it. Now, I'm sure you can buy these that have quarter 20s for your regular tripod head, just any number of options. I mean, these things are pretty much you know, everywhere. You can find these. A lot of times for finding stuff like this, by the way, uh, you know, finding these online 
is one of those, if you, only if you know exactly what you're looking for is it easy to find. Um, but if you go to a website like Adoramas or B&H, um, even Amazon, and you search for studio light adapters, you'll find these kind of adapters, and then you can kind of narrow down your search to show the variety of options. When it comes to posts like this, there's dozens and dozens of these that have male, female, you know, one, one of each on both ends, female on both ends, male on both ends, quarter 20 and 5 16s, or reversed, or just a variety of things. So that's why I have so many of these stupid adapters, because you never know what you're going to need to attach to what. Anyway, so this is on here, that's a 5816, and that is because that's on the bottom of my ball head here. So now this guy, I just need to attach onto here. Obviously the pole's gonna go into that, and then the camera goes on here. And so now I can go ahead and position the camera wherever I want. So this is just a simple ball head. I can put the camera wherever I'd like and lock it in. And of course, once the camera's on here, it's not like I have to get the exact right position for my shot because it's on the end of a pole that I'm able to move in any direction. So if I am, if I've got this camera way up in the air and I'm tilting it around and angling it, I can get pretty much any angle that I want once I've got this thing roughly close. Now the way that I shoot these things because I'm on with the Lumix ears and you can do this with most uh, mirrorless cameras is you can connect to your smartphone and view through the viewfinder um, on your smartphone. So I can hold the phone down here tilt the pole and be looking to see where it is. Before I had that capability, what I would do is put the camera on auto shoot to shoot a picture every like, five seconds or something like that. And I would shoot maybe 50 pictures, literally with the pole up there, just going a little bit this way, that way to click, 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 click. And one of those is going to be close enough. And obviously if the horizon's not perfectly straight, you can straighten it in post later. But that was how I did that before I had the ability to go through the camera. Um, and that is about it. Anything else I can show on here? So you want, well, this is a cool toy, and obviously you could attach this to it as well. This thing is called a triple threat. It's made by uh, FJ Westcott for attaching three strobes on there to give you a whole bunch of power. And there's a little umbrella hole in the middle of that as well. So this thing is pretty, uh, pretty awesome here. So again, one, one, two, three flashes onto that umbrella through the middle if you need to. Uh, love this guy. So that gives me a it gives you a ton of light. I actually use this mostly if I'm working with LED lights because they're not as bright. And if I want a big output from LED light, I can uh, I can use this. All right, that is everything I think I wanted to show today. And nothing else in there really related to this. So that painter's pole, let's go back to the, the screen over here real quick. Um, again, Adorama, uh, just search for Casey pole adapter. And that is, uh, that is the trick. That is the magic bullet right there. You want to grab that guy so that you can do all this stuff. And then again, head to your local hardware store to pick up a painter pole. That is the height and length that works for you. All right, folks, that's it. I'm out of here. Uh, again, don't forget if, uh, or if you missed the beginning, I would love to know if you're getting notified when I go live, please tell me what you've done. Have you liked the page? Have you liked videos? Have you specifically not hit the like button on videos? I'm trying to figure out what the pattern is that gets people notified of when I go live. Um, it's an interesting and odd thing. Anyway, that's it. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you later. See ya.